we'll talk about how exactly the loop is formed and all in a moment when we discuss about the elongation we'll talk about that but now let's start talking about the eukaryotic replication and the very first step of eukaryotic replication that is replication initiation uh, sorry prokaryotic replication we are talking so prokaryotic replication initiation or e coli replication initiation how exactly replication is started in prokaryotes replication initiated by melting the dna and initiating the process now what do you mean by melting the dna you know in in prokaryotes let's say this is e coli cell and this is the circular chromosome and this the chromosome is not present as simple as like this circle the chromosomes are present with multiple folds like this to accommodate chromosome in the e coli cell because the e coli cell is itself small inside of which huge information should be kept so secondary structures are also present in the chromosome but let's assume that the secondary structures are relaxed and we have a circular double stranded dna to be replicated even that all the strands they are having hydrogen bonds we need to melt some region of the hydrogen bond in that dna otherwise we cannot initiate the process because to initiate the replication we need to separate the dna strands right these are fixed strands we need to separate the strands from each other so this separation let's say zoom in version here so for the separation we call it melting of the dna dna needs to be melted melting means the hydrogen bonds present here will be broken and the hydrogen bond is present between both g with c how many 3 a with c 2 so which one is easy to break at so there is a specific location in e coli chromosome which is filled with at rich sequence followed by gc sequence okay and that is known as origin of replication or ori c ori c origin of replication so what origin of replication look like it looks something like this 3 13 base pair 80 rich repeats are present 13 13 13 80 80 80 80 80 80 13 80 rich sequence three such repeats followed by four nine base pair gc repeats so gc repeats are mentioned here with the blue color 80 are mentioned with red color this whole area with 13 base pair 380 repeat and 9 base pair 4 gc repeat together known as origin of replication or orec region all right and what happen is this orec region is the place where a specific protein known as dna a binds where particularly gc repeats 9 bases gc repeat this is where the dna a protein complex binds a polymer of dna dna a protein multiple such dna a proteins denoted with green color here they act as a polymer of protein which rotates the dna strand around themselves wraps the dna around themselves and we know it's a circular dna and if we create a wrap at some point upstream to release the tension this at rich sequence opens up we introduce a tension here which is upstream introduction of upstream tension wrapping of at rich region wrapping of gc rich region on top of dna a protein inserts a secondary structural pressure to the dna to release that pressure the upcoming or the downstream elements there is a immense pressure in the downstream element and as downstream element is filled with repeated at at sequence starts melting dna melting is done this way once dna melting is done let's assume this is the whole circular dna this is the only portion where the melting begins so melting means this is single stranded dna this is single stranded dna 
so the moment the melting is done two single stranded dna opens up then what we have single stranded binding proteins or ssbs will start covering individual single strand of the dna why to prevent them for re ligating themselves okay so melting is done and after melting dna a single strand binding proteins bound to them in order to prevent the reannealing and then another protein comes in known as dna b which is also known as helicase now what is the job of dna b dna b is a hexameric protein which two set, such set of hexameric proteins loaded in two separate melted strand of the dna and then this helicase protein's role is simply let's assume this is the structure this is a helicase protein this is another helicase protein this helicase moving this direction this helicase moving this direction so basically helicase load itself in a single stranded dna and starts separating the strands from each other so something like complete double strand there is a punch of hole that is created by melting the dna then helicase is loaded helicals separates it up so this structure is created ultimately where we have the this is blue color that is the gc rich sequence dna a dna is wrapping around the, and also the single strand binding proteins they separate the strands from each other and the helicase is loaded the helicase is loaded once the helicase is loaded now the helicase will separate the strands from each other and the process so basically this is where we have melting of the dna means it looks something like this where you can see this area looks like a y and this area looks like another y so this y shaped structure in the initiation of dna replication is known as dna replication fox and such two fox this is replication fox 1 and this is replication fox 2 two, two fox together are known as replication bubble so when any in any question they they say that this is a replication bubble formed you know a replication bubble consists of two replication fork okay one in the left side one in the right hand side and generally we don't say left right in case of dna generally we make it upstream and downstream and also we mark them based on the 5 prime 3 prime marking scheme now replication initiation so we have seen one example of replication initiation how it's done so again in this picture you will see the process uh, this is again the initiation complex the initial complex where we have origin of replication dna a protein binds to it and this portion will be melted melting open complex is formed and then in the open complex what we have we have dna a already existing here we have dna b right c already left and single strand binding proteins are present and at this moment what we have dna b c complex after loading dna b c releases so this is pre priming complex this is known as pre priming means the origin of dna replication is ready to initiate the process of polymerization that means the strands are melt the template dnas are open only the priming is need, needed so pre priming so before priming stage now the dna primer must be added right why why primer is needed because dna polymerase cannot initiate dna polymerization so rna stretch is needed small stretch of rna or ribonucleotides need to be added and that will be done by dna dependent rna polymerase enzyme known as primase dna dependent rna polymerase enzyme that is primase that will attach some nucleotides at the beginning that stretch of nucleotide will be known as a primer this priming need to be done in both the strands in both the template strands right because till this point it was not denoted which one is going to be leading which is going to be lagging it will be denoted once the polymerase is loaded so here you can see <clears throat> again the the same idea from a different point dna box dna protein binds melting at sequence helicase loaded so fork is now open this is one fork this is another fork 
two fork will move in the opposite direction and this is how replication works for prokaryotes this is where the fork is created and this fork will move opposite direction one of this fork will move in the counter clockwise and this one moves clockwise direction and these two fork will stop at 180 degree almost 180 degree opposite to the initial start site and once these two fork meet the termination will be done so the process of DNA replication in prokaryotes can be divided into three different sections initiation, elongation and termination we have seen the initiation part now we will talk about the elongation and we will also talk about the termination part 